Is it a car or is it a truck? Who cares? Only question that matters is, which one of you is gonna win it? It's day one of Project Identity Crisis, our 67 El Camino giveaway, happening right now on Truck Tech. It's always exciting when we get to start a new project. And for this one, we've decided that this 1967 Chevy El Camino is indeed a truck, not a car. And it's special in two ways. First, it's getting an LS-based power plant that's gonna put down a lot of power, be a ton of fun, along with a pretty cool retro themed paint job. And second, you will have a chance to win it. One of the reasons we chose a 67 model is Gabriel introduced their Hijackers brand of air adjustable shock absorbers 50 years ago. And we're teaming up with them to build this El Camino to give away to one of our lucky viewers. And we're pretty excited because Mike and Pat next door at Engine Power built us a six liter LQ4 truck engine that put down 550 horse on the engine dyno. That'll be plenty for this little truck. Gabriel sent us a rendering that'll let Jeremy go to town on a really crazy paint job with a lot of custom touches. That's right. We're going to lay down some colors that really pop. We're going to do a fade on the hood, show some pinstriping, do a little bit of shadowing here with some candy colors, and even ghost in Gabriel's logo in a few spots on the truck. It'd be pretty cool. I think this is going to look pretty trick. It has yeah. that vintage 70s kind of flavor, but with a lot of modern touches. Absolutely. Now, even though we're a few weeks away from painting this truck, this is the time where I like to lay down some paint on a test panel and get a good idea for where I'm going before we just hop in and do it on the truck. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I pretty much followed the rendering with the orange pinstripe and the blue insert. But hey, what's an old hot rod without some flames, right? Then up top, did the traditional fade from the yellow to the orange, but did a little bit of a modern paint touch and added some water droplets to give it a really cool effect. Man, this looks awesome. I can't wait to see how it's done. Now, any 70s flavored build wouldn't be complete without a killer stance and, of course, a whole bunch of power, which is where we're going to get started. Pop the hood. Our El Camino had already gone through a partial restoration, and the engine and transmission are in pretty good shape. So, we're going to take our time and remove everything carefully. <laughs> if you have ever removed a small block Chevy with the distributor in place, then you know it can easily hit the firewall and crack. So we'll remove it all together. The lower radiator hose is removed. And the power steering reservoir drain. The radiator is removed with the electric fans still attached. We need to get the truck up in the air so we can unbolt the exhaust at the collector. <laughs> then cut the pipe right after the muffler with our trusty sawzall. Next, the puny two inch tailpipes can be removed and discarded. See these lines going to nothing? Well, we believe this truck actually had a pair of Gabriel hijackers on it at some point in its life, which is a pretty awesome coincidence. There's a pair of lines that run from the frame back to the rear bumper where they meet up to an air valve that's on the other side. So you could pull up to the service station and fill up your air shocks. It's a messy job, but we need to remove the transmission pan and drain all the fluid. You know, if we actually didn't take the time to drain the transmission now, when we pull it out later, it would be all over the floor. So definitely a worthwhile step. The drive shaft can be removed, but we'll keep it and reuse it when the El Camino goes back together. We'll unbolt the transmission cross member, and then we can remove the headers from the bottom of the truck. Perfect. Back on the ground, we can remove the motor mount bolt. The drivetrain from our El Camino was pretty basic. We're told it's a 383 stroker that puts down around 420 horsepower. And as we found out, it actually ran pretty well. We're going with a modern vintage theme, which is why we've called our El Camino Project Identity Crisis. It's a classic truck, or 
maybe a car, with a contemporary power plant. And here it is. This is a 6-liter LQ4 truck engine built next door in the engine power shop by Pat and Mike. The rotating assembly is stock, and the heart of the engine is a hydraulic roller cam which measures in at 230 degrees intake and 238 degrees of exhaust duration at 50 thousandths lift. The cam is spun by a double row timing set. The short block is topped off with a pair of Trick Flow Gen X 255 LS3 style cylinder heads, which give this LQ4 a tremendous boost in power. It was finished up with a rocker trunnion upgrade and equipped with a Holley mid rise carbureted intake. Using an MSD 6LS ignition box and coils, and topped with a quick fuel 950 carburetor, it made 553 horsepower and 487 pound feet of torque, which will be perfect for our retro street and strip El Camino. Next, the first coat of many colors. We're back on Truck Tech with our 67 El Camino we're calling Project Identity Crisis. Now, since we're swapping engines, this is a great time to address the engine compartment. And to go along with that crazy paint job I've got planned over there, we've got to get rid of this ugly brown. And we could spray all of this flat black and be done with it, but you know what? That's not good enough for us. So we'll start stripping some of these parts out of here and prep this thing for some silver. One of the challenges you'll face when doing an LS engine swap is oil pan clearance. Now this is a 6 liter LQ4, which is what most of you will start with. They were primarily found in HD Silverados and Vans, so the oil pan sticks way down below the engine. That's good because it'll hold a lot of oil, but that's bad because the cast aluminum construction will crack if you hit a rock or a speed bump. So we're going to swap this one out. To get the extra ground clearance we need, we're going to be installing this Holley LS Swap oil pan that fits GM vehicles from 55 to 87. Now this version has extra clearance at the front of the pan for vehicles with front steering like our El Camino. Now the cool thing is it'll attach using a factory oil pan gasket and has provisions for an original oil cooler if you choose to run one. We're going to get started by swapping out to the shorter pickup tube. Well, as you can see, I've progressed this thing quite a bit. I've got the front end torn down and I'm prepping the firewall for paint. Now with this truck, we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally you'd see us strip it down to bare metal. We would filler work, prime, block, the whole deal. But with this El Camino, we actually looked for one that had a fresh restoration, had a really nice finish and was good and straight. This way we can do this to the entire truck and save us a ton of time. With it scuffed, we'll get it off the lift and get ready to spray some color on the firewall. All right, mask it up. Do it. Wait, me? I'm using two inch tape covering all the holes, both on the firewall itself, including the interior. This will prevent any unwanted overspray. Then we can cover the entire truck in plastic. Being that the firewall is right next to the engine, it can see a lot of oil and grease. So make sure you clean it properly with degreaser. Follow that up with a tack cloth. Now we're ready for some sealer. And this is a very important step when doing a color change. I'm using PPG DP50, and all we need is one coat. This will cut down on how much base we will have to use. Okay, so we're ready for base and the firewall is gonna get the exact same treatment as the body. So we went to single source and picked up this 1690 coarse satin aluminum. It's gonna look really good. It's got a lot of metallic in it. It mixes one to one with reducer. And I'll lay down two nice even coats. I'll follow that up with three coats of PPG 2021 clear. We'll just let that set right there overnight. Next, the beefy gearbox that'll handle 550 ponies. Start to put this together, you come get me.
I've got our Holly LS swap oil pan installed onto the 6 liter LQ4 that's slated to go into our 67 El Camino. Now the low profile design makes sure that we have no worries of smashing this thing off of any speed bumps, cracking the oil pan and dumping out all of the engine oil. Our El Camino came to us with a turbo 350 three speed automatic transmission. We want to reuse the same style of transmission, number one for that vintage feel and number two because it's just simpler. Now obviously we are going to upgrade to a much stronger turbo 350 because of the 550 horsepower this engine puts out, but more on that a little bit later. First we need to talk about what it takes to bolt up a vintage transmission to a modern LS style of engine, and the first thing is the bell housing. Now as it turns out, the bolt pattern is exactly the same between a vintage small block as it is on an LS engine, with one minor exception. There is a bolt hole that has not been drilled and tapped on the LS engine, but that's not a big deal because there are six other bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. Now you could just bolt up the appropriate flex plate to the LS engine and try to attach the transmission, but if you did, you'd run into some trouble, and that has to do with the spacing of the crankshaft. As it turns out, the crankshaft on a traditional small block extends 0.400 inches farther away from the bell housing flange than it does on the modern LS engine. With a straight edge held up, well, you can really tell that there's a difference. Now if you tried to run a torque converter this way, it wouldn't fully engage into the transmission and you'd have some major problems. Luckily though, the aftermarket has stepped up and offers several solutions to take care of this problem. And the first is a spacer that's exactly 0.400 inches thick. It simply slides onto the back of the crankshaft and the flex plate bolts on top of it. Now it also has this raised hub that'll center the torque converter perfectly. Now a better perhaps stronger option would be this LS to Turbo 350 swap flex plate. It's much thicker so you don't need to run a spacer between it and the crankshaft. The only thing that you do have to install is this pilot extender which simply slides into the back of the crankshaft and it'll keep the torque converter perfectly centered to the engine which is probably the most important part of this whole operation. And this is the setup that we're going to run. First I'll use an impact gun to spin the bolts all the way in, then torque them by hand to 74 foot pounds. Well, our LS engine is all prepped, and that means it's time for a transmission. Look what I got you. What do you have? Monster tranny. Hey man, look, I know you're busy, but seriously, I'm painting some parts. When you start to put this together, you come get me. I'll come help you out, all right? Guess it's time for his manicure. Well, like you said, this is from Monster Transmission, and it's the SS Mega Monster 350. And this baby is built to the hilt. It's filled with goodies like red alto clutch discs and choline steels, and the valve body has been recalibrated to give you maximum line pressure and fluid volume. So that means those clutch packs won't slip even under the harshest conditions. And believe me, we're going to try that out. Now the cool thing about this trans is you can either run it in full automatic or manual operation. So if you want to drop it down to first or second gear, it'll hold there for you, or just leave it in drive and let the trans do the thinking for you. Now depending on our vehicle's weight, differential gear, and intended usage, we needed a higher stall speed converter. And this is a Thor 245 millimeter unit that came with our monster transmission. Now that should stall for us somewhere around 3000 RPM, which is going to be a perfect blend between acceleration and drivability. Now on our transmission, we of course chose the firmest shifting option available, so we know this thing will definitely be chirping some gears for us. With the converter topped off with fluid, all it takes is a quick wiggle and jiggle to fully seat it into the transmission. After that, we'll wheel the trans over and bolt it up to our six liter. More power. <laughs> Next, race goodies for the LQ4. Custom exhaust work is part of building high performance trucks and cars, and it just happens to be my favorite part of the job. Now a lot of times a performance exhaust system is more than just two pipes running from the manifolds to the tailpipes. Oftentimes you'll need some sort of a two into one merge like a Y pipe or an X pipe or an H pipe for performance reasons. It balances the flow from the left to the right cylinder banks. Now a lot of times you can actually buy a part off the shelf that works for your application. This is an X pipe for an old muscle car setup and this is just a Y pipe you can buy that fits almost anything except four inches probably for a diesel. Now a lot of times, like I said, you can't buy something that's exactly 
exactly what you need. Maybe you have an engine swap or maybe you have long tube headers in place of exhaust manifolds. If you do any sort of custom exhaust work, you definitely have access to some sort of a welder. So I'm going to show you how to take that welder along with some pipe you probably have already laying around the shop and build your own custom exhaust crossovers. That means it'll save you a trip to the muffler shop, which definitely puts more money in your pocket. And we're going to start with a Y pipe. Let's say you have a V6 or maybe even a V8 swapped mini truck. Now obviously you have two banks of exhaust to deal with, but for space reasons it would be much simpler to run a single pipe. Now you could just tee the two pipes together, but that's really not the best in terms of performance. So instead I'm going to take these two 45 degree mandrel bands, join them together. I'm going to have a single 3 inch pipe for the remainder of the exhaust. This will be perfect for a mid 350 to 450 horsepower application. We'll get started by making some cuts. I'm using a fence to make sure the cuts are nice and straight, but the real trick to cutting tube on a curve like this is to use slow, steady pressure. If you force the material through the bandsaw, the blade can walk around and you'll have crooked cuts. With the cuts made, we'll clean up the edges and wipe off any contaminants. Line up the two pieces with the cuts facing each other, then tack weld them together. Next, take a short 3 inch diameter pipe and squish it in the vise and make an oval whose short length is 2 and a half inches. Mark the tip of the merge and cut it off using a square. Then weld it together, finishing your Y pipe. We built this custom Y pipe in about an hour using only basic fabrication tools. Now this would be a great project to learn if you're a beginner welder. Now an X pipe isn't really that much more difficult. I just took two 90 degree bends and cut the backs off of them so they can butt perfectly together. Not only will building custom exhaust parts save you money, but it gives you the satisfaction of doing it yourself. We often get asked what we use to protect our hands when dealing with solvents. These are Adena Shadow Black Nitrile Gloves from Matco Tools. They're the same gloves law enforcement and tattoo artists use, and they're great for automotive uses. They don't tear and have a textured surface, which means a strong grip for wet and dry applications. So for less than 20 bucks, they come in a box of 90, and you can get them at MatcoTools.com. Every engine produces crankcase vapors. Typically, there's a PCV system that'll remove those vapors and burn it in your engine, but that's no good in a performance application. It'll contaminate your intake manifold and causes a lack of performance. Now, Summit Racing sells these Trick Flow Universal Air Oil Separators. You can plumb it into your PCV system or run it in standalone operation like a traditional crankcase breather. It comes with a sight glass so you know when it's full and a ball valve so you can drain it when the time comes. And of course, it comes with all the hardware you need to complete your installation. Grab yours at summitracing.com. Okay, we've got the engine and transmission ready to drop in the El Camino. The firewall's all cured. I've taken a little time and cleaned up and painted the frame so this thing is ready to go in. Now, swapping a modern LS into a vintage like we have is actually really simple. We're using engine mounts from a 98 through 02 Camaro or Firebird LS1. And what's great about these is you can pick them up at any parts store. But what makes this swap so simple is Hooker has designed frame mounts that bolt right up to our classic El Camino and work in conjunction with these LS mounts. All right, man, I want to see this thing in. Let's get it in there. Let's go. You good so far. All right, we're getting close to the firewall right there. I've got about an inch. Well, man, she's in there. You know, it really wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't. And you know my favorite part. We didn't scratch that paint. Hey, that's a good day in anybody's book. You know, our El Camino is a long ways away from seeing the road again, and it's going to take a whole bunch of new parts to get us there. We'll start our exhaust off with these Hooker Blackheart LS swap headers for the GMA body. We are going to reuse a couple of parts that came with our engine from Pat and Mike, like the MSD ignition controller and the four barrel intake manifold. Now, we will replace that Quick Fuel 950 with a Holly Track Warrior 750 carburetor, and of course, we picked up a whole bunch of new accessories to dress out the engine. Yeah, and with our Gabriel giveaway El Camino, I'm not going to bore you you guys with all that stuff like sanding and all that jazz. So next time you guys see this thing, be ready to lay down some color. What color? 
Well, let's see, what color do we not have? We've got silver, blue, dark blue, yellow, orange. I mean, how many colors could we add to let's it? Let's get to it. 